So, the, the, uh, we can also uh, talk a little bit further about what these Lagrange multipliers are actually saying. And uh, for that, let us go back to our example again. And uh, I will tell you what. Uh, so, you can actually calculate what the uh, um, what the lambda star in this particular case was. And uh, you what you will notice is that in this case, actually, if you if you take write it in a different color. So, if you take the lambda star actually satisfies this. It is the if I look at this optimal value m of alpha and look at the partial derivative of m of alpha with respect to alpha. Then that is actually lambda star. So, that is so in short it is equal to 2 a b. Now, what is the meaning of this? What this means is that the the lambda star is telling me how much would the ob objective function change if I changed my alpha, how much would the not the objective function the optimal value change if I changed my alpha. So, m of alpha remember was the size was the uh, area of the largest rectangle, it is a function of alpha, alpha was the right hand side here. Alpha tells you how big is your ellipse, right? If I scale alpha, my ellipse uh, magnifies uh, or becomes smaller. So, if I change my alpha slightly, how much would the size of the largest rectangle, how much would the area of the largest rectangle change by? That is what my lambda star is telling me. A lambda star is actually equal, is 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 the derivative of the optimal value with respect to with respect to alpha. So the so here is the interpretation and the importance of Lagrange multipliers. Lagrange multipliers are telling us how sensitive is the optimal value to changes in the constraint. So think of the constraint as a resource. Okay, suppose I tell you that alpha is my is the size of my L the the uh, controls say the plot of the size of the plot of land this which is of this elliptical shape plot of land and alpha controls the size of that so alpha is a way by which i'm going to measure the size of that uh, plot of land i if i wanted to change my alpha a little bit means if i wanted to go for a slightly bigger plot of land how much bigger of a rectangle could i accommodate in that in terms of area well, the answer is for a delta alpha change in uh, in alpha, it would be lambda star times delta alpha would be the change would be the change in the area of the optimal of the largest rectangle. Okay. So, Lagrange multipliers tell us something about uh, the the inter. So, this is what's called sensitivity. Sensitivity is for small change in constraints what is the change in optimal value So, small changes in the right in the constants of the constraint, what is the change in the optimal value? That, so, you can uh, do this one constraint at a time also. You look at you do not need to look at all constraints together. Look at if you want if you are changing only one constraint by a slight amount, you look at how much is uh, uh, you, you, you are basically just do making a, a change in that particular component of, of alpha. So, what, uh, what together uh, by uh, what, together with this you will be able to say what the, so I will explain what this is. So, you can get in the general case if 
if I look at just So, this is uh, this is the derivative of the optimal value with respect to alpha that is that is always equal to lambda star transpose. Now, one thing to note here is uh, because you are talking of equality constraints because you are on surfaces right a bigger value of alpha ne does not necessarily mean you have more resource. It just happened because we are talking of this ellipse that larger alpha would mean a bigger ellipse and smaller alpha would mean a smaller ellipse. But in general as you change your alpha your surface can change in many diff in strange ways. So, it does not necessarily mean that you have you are optimizing over a bigger region or that the earlier region is enclosed in the previous region or any of that ok. Because, because we are talking of surfaces here as alpha changes the shape of the surface uh, or the contour on which you are operating will change. So, it is possible that the objective can by increasing alpha your objective could decrease or it is possible that by decreasing alpha your objective could increase. All of that is encapsulated in the sign of lambda. Lambda is also then the sign of lambda also tells you with, uh, with which constraints are sort of more binding than the others where which and in which direction should you be changing the constraint whether you should be decreasing or increasing in order to get a better object. So, we were doing this problem of uh, last time we did this problem of of least squares uh, solutions of equations that were over determined right. So, these were so you could not satisfy all of the all equations at once we, we did this in the context of machine learning and also in the context of maximum likelihood estimation. So, uh, these so all equations could not be satisfied together by a linear function by a linear uh, relation. So, we were looking for a the minimizing the sum of the squares of the residues that was the problem we were looking at that became a unconstrained optimization problem. So, today I will look at a slightly different problem. So, here suppose you have uh, suppose you have a matrix A and since this matrix is a fat matrix what I mean by this is you should imagine it to be something like this it has fewer rows and and more columns. So, this is the nature of the of the matrix A. So, it is and let us assume that it is full row rank. Now, if I ask you for a solution of this A x equal to B ok, where B is some other vector. So, the suppose my A is uh, in R m cross n and B is in R n R m sorry and I ask you for a solution of A x equal to B. And so, I am in this region where m is less than n actually m is much less than n in general ok. So, then can you solve for x and how many solutions do we have? Yes. Yeah, so, this is there are fewer so, number of unknowns here is n which is the number of columns of A and number of equations is m which is the number of rows of A you have fewer rows than equa uh, than uh, uh, columns or fewer equations than variables. So, you can easily of course, solve for this and in fact, you will get not one, but infinitely many solutions. Why infinitely many? Because you can this sort of matrix a fat matrix like this will always have a null space right. So, the null space of A null space of A this is z such that A z equals 0. So, this is this is an entire subspace of R n right. So, if I have one solution like this x hat suppose if I take x hat let x hat be such that a x hat equals b and I take any z in the null space of A, then what can I say? x hat plus z is also a solution of this 
right. So, if I have one solution and of course, there is at least one, I can always generate an infinitely many, uh, uh, infinitely many more by just pick, picking points from the subspace, all right. So, then in that in this sort of situation, then the a common problem that get, that is posed is that you want to find a solution that has a certain structure. Now, structure mean, can mean many different things, ok. Structure can mean sparsity, structure can mean close to something else, structure can mean uh, uh, having the least uh, having the least norm, ok. So, in this case let us look at the least norm problem. So, the problem there is to then is to look at amongst all solutions x of the system of equations A x equal to b, you want to find the one which has the least least norm. So, x transpose x or you can x transpose x that is the same as norm of x whole square. So, we have this problem ok. So, now if a is in r m cross n how many variables uh, are we optimizing over? You have n variables here. x is in r n right n variables n scalar variables. How many constraints do we have? m of these right all of them are put together I have written it as a matrix equation, but it is basically m m individual scalar constraints right n variables m constraints. So, this is now an optimization problem of, of trying to find the solution of of least norm that satisfies a linear system of equations right okay. let's try let, let us solve this so remember this uh, this function l that i introduced if i look if you look at this function l okay and i write here just the, look at this quantity the gradient with respect to x of l what would that be that would be f 0 of x minus gradient of f 1 of x times lambda 1 minus gradient of f 2 of x times lambda 2 dot 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 gradient of f m of x times lambda m correct. And now, go back to the boxed equation here can you tell can you write this equation in terms of this function l this is i mean if i just take the transpose of this the what this is effectively would amount to is to simply say it would amount to saying that the gradient of this lagrangian equation with respect to x evaluated at x star lambda star should be equal to 0 right so this box equation is basic uh, is all it is saying is that the gradient of the Lagrangian must be equal to 0. So, this is so we can this is one uh, succinct way of writing uh, writing this equation the red the red box equation. In addition of course, you have you need to satisfy your uh, the, the these boxed equations ok. So, let us let us use that sort of uh, notation here ok. So, let us write the Lagrangian. So, what would be the Lagrangian? I I have my objective x transpose x and minus now I I need to write so what uh, I can go back here if you like Lagrangian was linear com you are taking linear combination of the constraints right. So, the constraints were uh, so, I ok. So, yeah. So, these constraints were written as f uh, yeah the the uh, so actually I have I made a slight error here let me just correct that. So,
So, let me absorb all the alphas also in the definition of the functions. So, if f 1 of x minus alpha equal to 0 is my is my is my constraint ok. So, if uh, this so it is lambda 1 times f 1 of x minus alpha lambda m dot 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 lambda m into f f m of x minus alpha. This does not affect uh, affect the way I after I take the partial derivative with respect to x all the alphas will not matter uh, will anyway go away. So, it does not does not affect affect this condition ok. So, let us write it in this sort of way. So, mine so I can write it uh, as for my problem. So, you have you have x transpose x minus now let lambda be your Lagrange multiplier vector and I will do lambda transpose a x minus b. Now, can you verify that this is the same as doing this is the same as doing actually lambda 1 into So, where a can be expressed as a 1 transpose dot 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 a m transpose. So, if my rows of a are a 1 transpose a 2 transpose and a m transpose those are my uh, those are my rows of a okay. then I can write this uh, Lagrangian in this sort of way. So, it is x transpose x minus lambda transpose a x minus b, where now lambda is just lambda is a vector in is just any vector in R n. So, what I have to solve for is uh, is that is my previous box equation which is the gradient of the Lagrangian should be equal to 0 and in addition to that I need to solve I need to make sure I am feasible which is this other box equation ok, which means I need to make sure that a x equals b these are my these are the equations I need to solve. Is this clear? So, if I put the gradient of the Lagrangian with respect to x let us uh, let us solve uh, let us calculate that what would that be? What is the gradient of the Lagrangian with respect to x? So, it is 2 x minus a transpose lambda. So, it is 2 x minus a transpose lambda. So, this is my uh, this is the Lagrangian I am taking the, its the its gradient with respect to x it gives me 2 x minus a it will you can check this this is 2 x minus a transpose lambda. So, I want I need to put this equal to 0. So, that gives me that x is equal to a transpose lambda divided by 2. Okay. Now, I also need to satisfy a x equals b. So, I can just substitute for this x out here and that would give me a into a transpose lambda by 2 equals b. Now, a into a transpose remember a was a fat matrix like this a transpose would be a thin matrix a and a I have assumed is full row rank. So, a into a transpose is invertible right. So, consequently I can take this on the other side and so I have a a transpose whole thing inverse b and a 2 outside that is my lambda with my lambda known I can put it back here to get back my x. So, this is my lambda star lambda equals lambda star as this put this back here and that gives me my x star as equal to a transpose a a transpose inverse b sorry uh, into yeah this is not 2.
So, this is your least norm solution ok. So, the least norm solution of this optimization problem is uh, is this is this one here. So, everyone understood the uh, what we did we 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 have your we had our optimization problem we wrote out the Lagrangian function then we took the derivative gradient with of the Lagrangian with respect to just the x variable put that equal to 0 and then we had to also satisfy our constraint. These were the two equations we need to satisfy you put that in we get that we found actually that there is a unique solution. So, it has to be therefore, that this is this is the solution of the problem is this clear. Okay. All right. So, uh, so I will. Uh, so we can end here. We will continue again next time.